everybody. It is tea time, afternoon tea, and I thought what would go better with my cup of afternoon tea than a delicious homemade scone. So I thought that I would pop on and I got this recipe, a fellow um, director with The Pampered Chef, a friend of mine, made these yesterday and I thought, oh my God, they look good. I'm going to make them too. So I thought, well, why not make them for the first time live with you guys? So this is a super easy recipe by the looks of it, and I think this would be fun to get your kids involved um, with. So please let me know if you're watching me. Give me some thumbs up. Give me some hearts. How do you do hearts? Hearts. Uh, just let me know that you're there. Also, um, I would love to know, do you say scone or scone? I say scones. Um, and I'm pretty sure um, in England they say scones too. Um, I've never really heard of scone. If you say scone, uh, comment below with the O for scone. Then I'll know you say that. I say a scone. Anyhow, let me clear my way here. And we're going to go ahead and get started. So, first thing we need is a large bowl. And we need two cups of all-purpose flour. So let me measure out my two cups of all-purpose flour. There we go. So I'm just going to get a great big scoop and then, hello there, how are you? Do you say scone or scones? If you say scone, comment with an O. So I know you say scone. I say scone. All right, so I've got my flour right here and I'm just gonna, I need to somehow move this over, I think. There you go. Now you can see. So I got a big heaping of one cup and I'm just gonna use my leveler, leveler to level it all off even. So we need two cups of the all-purpose flour. So we're gonna do our dry ingredients first and then we'll do our wet ingredients. Okay, there we go. And then I need a half a cup of sugar. So I'll just dump in my half a cup of sugar. All right, if you're watching me, say live. So I know you're watching live. And if you're watching later on, it's the repeat, let, uh, replay. Let me know, replay. So we got the sugar and we need one teaspoon of salt. So I have my um, teaspoon measure here. Measure out the salt, put that in. And now I'm just gonna kind of whisk together these dry ingredients. All it is is flour, sugar, salt. There we go. Oh, baking powder. I need two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. All right, so let's see, here's one, two. Every day, I love to have my afternoon tea. My parents grew up having that, you know, afternoon tea. My husband drinks afternoon tea, he's British. So I love to have my tea too, although I am typically a coffee drinker. All right, so we got the dry ingredients all whisked up, ready to go. I'm gonna set it aside. Now we're gonna start working with the um, butter here. So this is one stick of butter, and I used my grater so that I could grate the butter. So it's just easier to use. Look how much butter you get when you grate it. That's one stick. So to grate the butter, put it in your freezer so that it gets super, super cold, and then you can easily grate it. So you're gonna want to put that in there with your flour. I'm just gonna use my handy dandy scraper here. And then I'm gonna use the um, pastry cutter to cut the, the butter into the flour. If you don't have a pastry cutter, my butter's already starting to melt because it's kind of hot in my house. All right, that's all right. It's all good, it's all good, no big deal. So here's a pastry cutter. If you don't have a pastry cutter, you can always just use two forks. I tried that. Um, I made biscuits for the first time, uh, I guess a couple years ago, and I didn't have the pastry blender or the pastry cutter, so I landed up using the two forks way harder, so I ended up getting this. If you're watching me live, please comment with live so I know you're there, and if you're watching later on today, comment with replay. So we're just gonna cut the butter into our flour, our dry ingredients. So when you grate the butter like that, it's a lot easier to cut it in 
than when I was, you know, just used the forks or uh, just chunked up the butter. So you want it to kind of get like mixed in, all mixed in, and it'll be kind of like pea size, I guess you would say. So we'll get that incorporated. There we go. Now, if you're not ready with your wet ingredients to start right away, then you're gonna wanna put this in your refrigerator because you want your um, batter really ice cold. But I'm ready to go ahead and start with the wet ingredients, so I'm just gonna leave it on the counter. All right. So for the wet ingredients, let me get another bowl here. We need one cup of heavy whipping cream or buttermilk. So you can use either a cup of cream or a cup of buttermilk. If you don't have either one of those, you can use regular milk, a cup of regular milk, and add about a, uh, about a tablespoon, I believe, of lemon, and it will create buttermilk. Did you know that? That's a pretty cool tip. Ha, ah, right? Anyway, I, I have the, butter, or the uh, heavy cream, so we're good. So a cup of cream, one egg, and I gotta read my ingredient, my recipe here, and one and a half teaspoon of vanilla extract. So I hope I have one and a half teaspoons left. I've been using it. Here we go, it's one and a half. Yeah, I have, actually I have a little bit left. All right, and then I'm just gonna whisk these ingredients together. Now I'm using our mixing bowl set. It does come with a third bowl, so it comes with three, three bowls. So we'll get these whisked together. And then I'm just gonna add this to the dry ingredients. Please be sure to comment live if you're watching me right now. All right, so we're just gonna add this to here. So the wet is now into the dry. I'm gonna switch over and use my large scraper and I'm just gonna mix all of this together. Now at this point, I can um, put in my add-ins. So you can add anything you want. If you have some dried fruit, some nuts, some chocolate chips, whatever uh, add-ins you would like to add. I am going to add blueberries. I don't have any dried fruits. I don't have any nuts on hand besides some almonds. I didn't want to do almonds. Uh, but I do happen to have some blueberries. So I'm going to do those. I'm going to have to be very careful. Now, if your dough is really um, dry, you can add a little bit more of the cream to it or the buttermilk. It will be sticky. That's the way the dough is. So let me, where's my blueberries? Blueberries. I've lost my blueberries. Oh, there they are. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to add blueberries to this. I'm going to add chocolate chips. I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Looking at this dough and looking at those blueberries, I think that I would smash those blueberries to smithereens if I dumped them in there. Don't you all think? So I'm just going to add a few of the chocolate chips, not too many. There we go. That's not plenty. I don't want it very chocolatey. Just, to, just whatever. You can also just leave it plain. You don't even have to add any add-ins. All right. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to get out my pastry mat. If you don't have a pastry mat, you can just use a cutting board. But if you do do a lot of baking, our, I love our pastry mat. I really couldn't say anything negative about our pastry mat. I absolutely love it. And I do not do a lot of baking, but it's just handy to have. All right, I'm just gonna put a little bit of flour on my mat so that this dough won't stick to it. My hands are super clean. Like everybody, we've been washing them like crazy. So I've washed my hands like crazy. They are clean. All right, so we got that. And I'm just gonna turn this dough out onto my pastry mat now. So in England, having afternoon tea in a scone Clotted with clotted cream and jam is the thing to do. 
So um, whenever we go visit my husband's family, that's what is our big treat. I just like a little bit of clotted cream. I don't like too much of it. A little bit of clotted cream with the jelly is really, really good. Clotted cream, for those that don't know, is really just like butter. I don't even know why they call it cream because it's very buttery and it's just like butter. All right, so now I'm gonna get a little bit more flour. This is a little on the sticky side. I'm just gonna sprinkle it on here like that. Take this off of here. And now we're just gonna to wanna to form this into a round uh, ball. Not really a ball, it's gonna be flat, but into a round shape, about eight inches. So we'll just mush it together like this. A little bit more flour on my hand, there we go. Let's mush it together into about eight inch round circle. That. doesn't have to be perfect there you go push it together flatten it out what I like about our baking mat I don't know if you can see it can y'all see what I'm even doing uh, but the baking mat does have circles so it has 8 inch it has 10 inch and it has 12 inch on here it also has the inches going around the sides so I love our baking mat Plus, then you don't mess up your counter. But like I said, you could use your cutting board. Okay, so now all we're going to do is cut this into eight pieces. So I'm gonna make my little smaller. I think I got a little too big. I want a great big fat scone. All right, okay, so all I'm gonna do is using my handy scraper, cut these, dip it in here. That's two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so now we have eight almost even pieces. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is I'm going to put it on my stoneware bar pan. If you don't have a stoneware bar pan, obviously you just use whatever that you happen to have a cookie sheet or whatever, and it goes in a 400 degree preheated oven for between 18 and 26 minutes, depending on how big. These are pretty big uh, scones, so I'm gonna set mine for 22 minutes and then check on them. So you wanna put them on here, kind of spread them out. You don't want them too close together. Also, if you didn't want to make them so big, you can separate your dough and then you can cut them into smaller pieces. So separate your dough into two circles and then you can uh, make smaller scones, scones, whatever they're called. Or you can actually just um, roll them and just make um, a balls, like drop, like a drop biscuit kind of a thing. But these are gonna be so yummy. I'll show you the finished product when they are done baking. I'm gonna wash my hands so I can get them into the oven. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. Let me know if you make some homemade scones or scones in your home. Bye. Stay home, wash your hands, practice your distancing. <laughs> Hello, I'm back. I forgot a step. I put them in the oven and realized I forgot a step, so I got them out of the oven and I am back. So I am pampered, not perfect, right? Y'all have heard me say that lots of times. I am pampered, not perfect. The step I forgot is you want to add a little bit of cream and then we want to baste the top of uh, each of our scones with a little bit of the cream. So I'm just using a little bit of the extra cream in the bowl and I add a little bit more and I'm just using my pastry brush here and I'm just gonna put a little bit on each one totally forgot this step you can also sprinkle them now with a little bit of sugar if you want to I am NOT going to sprinkle them with sugar I'm just gonna leave them like this so anyway I just wanted to let you know that I did forget a step and here you go 
Awesome. Okay, now for real they're going in the oven.